Hello fellow Unreal Engine games developers. Today I'm going to show you how to take your static menus or widgets and convert them so that they animate and slide in and slide out from the edges of the screen. Let's get to it. Uh, quite a simple tutorial today. I'm going to take this static menu and change it so that it slides in when the user calls it and then slides out again of the screen when the user no longer needs the menu. And we can do this from either side of the screen or the top or the bottom of the screen. And it's nice and simple in um, Unreal Engine. So let's show you what I've created so far. Uh, you can see that I've created this simple menu widget. Um, if I go into play mode and show you, I'm just using the top down sample menu. If I press the M key, I show the menu and if I press the M key again, it hides it. So at the moment, it's just static in the center of the screen and it's displayed and uh, not displayed. So I want to change it so it animates sliding in from the side of the screen. And then when I finish with it, it slides out again. Let's uh, come out of play mode. And let me just show you what I've set up so far. So I've set up this widget called W menu. And if I go to the player controller for this game and open it up, I've set up this flip flop event. So if I press the M key for menu, the first time I press it, it uh, creates this menu widget, sets it to the variable and adds it to the viewport. Second time I press the M key, it removes the widget from the parent. Third time I press it, we've already set up the menu, so it doesn't need to create it again. It just adds it to the viewport. So we'll come back and change this in a second. But the uh, first thing I want to do is to set up the widget so that it's got some animation to slide in. So let's go back to our widget. And um, the first thing we want to do is decide where we want to slide it in from. So if I go to the main border here, you can see that we can set the anchor point and anchors are a much misunderstood part of the uh, UI UMG uh, scenario. I think people think that if you uh, anchor it to the left here, it will move to the left. But in reality, if I click that button here, it's going to stay where it is. And that's because it's anchoring it relative to this point. So it's, it's keeping it in this point. But if I uh, make the screen bigger, this menu will move towards that corner. I will stay relative to that corner. If we want it to actually be pinned to this corner or, or aligned to this corner, then we have to use the modifiers in the anchors. So if you go into anchors, you'll see that it says here, hold shift to update the alignment, hold control to update the position. So if I do control, it puts it in that corner, but it's centered. If I hold shift and do that, then it's not only positioned that place, but it's aligned to that corner as well. So my first piece of advice for you is if you want to align it to a corner, get in the habit of pressing control and shift when you anchor it. So go into the anchor, so if I press it here, control and shift, the top right, control shift, bottom left, control shift, bottom uh, left. And um, let's say for this particular example, we want it, uh, we want it to slide in from the bottom right of the screen. Let me do control shift. Maybe I want to um, move it up slightly as well, but I'll do that in a minute. The key, um, the key elements that we want to animate and want to work with are these alignment values. So these alignment here, uh, if I put zero on the X just to show you, you see it's off the screen. So zero is off the screen on the x-axis. And if you drag it, come off it for a second. If I drag it, you see that as it goes up towards one, it's moving in. And once it reaches a value of one, it's perfectly aligned with the edge there. So we can use this to animate between zero and one to slide in and slide out. Uh, now, if we want it not perfectly in the corner, we could obviously move it up by 
moving it a certain number of pixels above. Now that that's fine, but the problem with doing it in absolute values is that if people have small screens, then the actual gap is um, relatively larger than if somebody has a large screen. So I would say use these alignment values also to give you the spacing you want on your um, on your top and bottom uh, area. So for example, in the Y here, you can see this has the same thing. So if I do zero here, it's off the bottom of the screen. One goes in. So you, you could use that to have it uh, sliding in from the bottom of the screen. But we can also use this to give us a little bit of extra space. So if I did 1.2, it's given us about a button's width here. And this is a relative value so that if we make it a larger screen, this will expand as well. So I would say if you want to do um, some sort of margins here, use this alignment to keep it consistent as people change the screen size. OK, that being said, we now want to create an animation uh, for our menu to slide in. And this is where, well, th this is called UI UMG, Unreal Motion Graphics. And the reason it's called that is because it has these motion abilities in the animation section. So much like After Effects, where you can animate and keyframe different elements, you can do exactly the same thing here. So what we need to do first of all is create a new animation. Let's click on this and say slide in, you can call it whatever you like. And then if you select it, now this timeline thing or timeline panel gets highlighted so we can start to uh, keyframe different elements. So you remembered I said that I wanted to use this alignment zero to one. So we've, at the moment in the timeline, you want to make sure you're positioned at zero. And let's set our X alignment to zero. So, at the, so that means we're just off the screen. And if you click on the add a keyframe, you can see that in the timeline, it's put in a keyframe at zero. And say we want to take, I don't know, let's just say one second to slide in. If you click on one second, and now what we'll do is make this X value one, and don't forget to click this add keyframe. And now you've got a sliding area here. So if we go back to the start of the, of the animation and click play, it, um, slides in, right to left. And the good thing with this is that we don't need to create a slide out because the slide out is effectively the same thing in reverse. So we can just play the animation backwards. We want to reverse out. So um, let's now update our player controller. So instead of just showing the menu, we show the menu and we play the animation. So remember the animation is called slide in. Let's compile and save this. Go back to our controller. And uh, this time, after we've added it to the viewport, we want to then uh, play the animation. And we do that by dragging off our menu. If I type, start to type slide in, I can get that slide in animation variable. And then if I drag off here and say play animation, you see you can do play animation forward and reverse. Uh, let's just do actually play animation forward is what we want. And let's do that after we add it to the viewport. So um, the target of the animation is the menu. So we need to drag the menu in here. The animation we've got and then playback speed do it one time speed, that's fine. And do we want to restore this data afterwards? No, we want to leave it um, slid in once it's finished so that we can slide it out by playing it backwards. Okay, so that will do the forward animation. And actually we could probably do a quick check of that. Let's uh, press play. If I press the M key, there we go, it slides in. And we won't do anything else yet because we haven't, done the reverse to slide out, but at least the first part works. So let's go in here. And what we'll do now is if I 
drag out of here, the slide in animation and do play, animation reverse. Okay. And again, we'll use our menu as the target. And we want to attach that to the flip-flop. So we no longer want to remove the uh, widget from the parent. We want to play the animation in reverse. Now, there's just one other change we're going to have to make because, because we're not removing it from the viewport, we no longer need to add it to the viewport the second time we come in. So what we want to do is if I just disconnect this and just move it out of the way slightly. Second time we come in, we just want to play the animation. And the first time we, we come in, we want to create the widget, set it, add it to the viewport, and then play the animation. A little bit messy with the nodes, but we can clear this up later. So that should uh, play the slide in when we first um, create the menu, play it in reverse when we press M again to remove the menu and then play it forward again if we play it, press it a third time. Let's go into play mode and you press M and it slides in, press M again and it slides out. And if I do it a third time, it's in again and out again. And just to show you, if I make the screen like full size, if I press the M key, you see, it still slides in from the end and it has the relative space at the bottom as well because of our Y alignment. So um, it's a much neater way of uh, showing your uh, widgets or menus. But we can do a couple of other things as well. We don't have to just animate the slide in, slide out. Uh, so let me just show you two more things before I finish off on this uh, session. So go back to the menu. We can also do things like um, well, we can we can keyframe any element here. So we could, for example, keyframe the opacity. So if I go to the canvas panel, we've got this render opacity. If I press zero here, it effectively makes the whole of the canvas invisible and one is fully visible. So we could um, we could animate that as well. So let's go back to the start of the uh, animation and let's make the menu or I'm on the canvas panel. Uh, top level, make that invisible and keyframe it. And then let's go to the end, the one second mark, and make it fully visible again and keyframe that. But now we have a set of keyframes to um, go through the opacity. If we go back and press play, now it slides in and fades in at the same time. So that's quite a nice effect. And it's coming in in a sort of a linear fashion. You can also do things like you can adjust the curve so it comes in maybe quicker to start off with, or even maybe overshoot slightly and you know, sort of bounces back. And the way you do that is if you select the um, keyframes you're interested in, which is the position, if you go to the curve editor here, Yours might be a pop-up screen, but you can see that, uh, zoom in a bit, at the moment it's set to this auto, uh, let's, let's click on this, right click, you see it's set to auto, which means it does this sort of Bezier curve. So it eases in and eases out, but you can, you can change that. So you can select this and you can change the curve. So for example, we could have it coming in very quickly to start off with and maybe even overshooting slightly before it then comes back down to the uh, right hand edge. And if we look at that, if we go back to the start, you see it sort of comes in fast and then bounces back. So you have quite a lot of options there. And because this is all being done in this animation, uh, it, um, it will be immediately uh, used when we play the project. So if I go into play mode, press M, it's playing this new animation and in reverse it bounces and fades away. So I hope you found today's tutorial useful. Um, I'm always putting up new uh, pieces of advice and hints and tips. So stay subscribed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.